gotta break a few eggs before you make an omelet. The time is here, man. I'm so pumped. I, I'm, I'm a little bit geeked out right now because the guys from Rocky State are here. We are finally putting the pond in. I've been teasing for so very long. These guys have been hard at it since 7 a.m. this morning. But don't worry because we are going to put you through the test and you're going to see the blow by blow of how these guys make incredible water seeds. And they're doing it in one day. What's wrong with you guys? This is the way animals have to live. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. It was a 7 a.m. start for the build this morning. Believe it or not, this insanely talented crew from Aquascape has promised that it will be a fully functioning Fly River Turtle habitat with waterfall and filtration system in place in a mere 10 hours from now. Watching these guys work has me in total awe. And truth be told, I'm a bit giddy with excitement as well. All right guys, so the front yard is completely torn up and I'm excited. I like making a mess, especially when things are gonna look beautiful at the end. So we're joining these guys in mid-construction. Uh, we've already excavated the hole and they're adding rock right now. And we've got some massive boulders. I gotta give a shout out to my buddy, Crocodile Kyle. Kyle has been so generous with um, not only his time, because there's his Kubota, and you'll see we got, we got rocks uh, attached to the Kubota. He's been helping out. Uh, he gave me all these rocks, and for the last week and a half, I've been moving rock to this property. And some were so big that I couldn't lift them until yesterday when the Aquascapes guys showed up. So right now, you can see what they're doing. They're, they formed it. We've got the liner down, the underlayment, and here is uh, Captain Aquascape himself, Greg the Pond Guy. Greg, come over here, man. Yes, this is so um, fun. So, you know, give us a little bit of a blow by blow of what it entailed to get to this level that we're at right now. Okay, where we're at right now. A lot now. of digging. Yeah, know we, that. We love the Florida sand. Yes, it's very sandy. There's not a lot of roots to contend with or we, rocks. We put down the underlayment. Okay. We put down the 45 mil liner. So check it out. Here's the underlayment right here. Um, so this protects against any punctures that the liner may it's encounter. Woven geotextile, so okay. it'll allow gases to escape. Okay, very It's cool. a padding below that. And then we, because we're using this, you know, this pretty sharp, you know, heavy stone, which we've never actually worked with up okay. in Chicago, go figure. Yeah. So we're using this uh, uh, heavier density uh, pad here. So we have basically a sandwich, the liner sandwiched. Okay. And then... Um, so, so it's protected from both sides. Both sides, yeah. and especially with the turtles digging and everything else. Copy that. And then this has put some jet system in, so we're really cool. We wanted to put the jets in here for those guys to I'm, swim again. Yeah, because the whole goal when, when I met uh, Greg, we were talking about, look, I want to put fly rows in here. We have uh, a male, we got to find a female, and the goal is to get them to breathe. Um, the cool thing, though, about the jets, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to provide two, two, uh, two purposes. One, they're going to create a lot of flow for these animals to swim against. But two, they're going to really agitate the bottom as well. Yes. It's gonna cause so we're going gonna, gonna to have jets on the top. We're going to have jets on below. Okay. Jets on the top for them to really swim against jets below to keep things agitated. Usually yeah. your pond, the way you design them, uh, they're an ecosystem. If you can run, you'll run this year round. With yes. the, you know, we got the skimmer, the mechanical skimmers right over there. Gee, look that up. So that's where our, our pumps are going to sit. Our two pumps are going to sit in there. Okay. One for the jet and one for the, the waterfalls. waterfalls. And the waterfall is actually a biological filter. Fil yeah, that was, I, I got to tell you, when you were building ponds years sure. ago, you were telling me, and we, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but he was, he would make, uh, like most of us that are in yep. the reptile hobbies, we kind of find things and repurpose them. Yep. Uh, you got very successful doing that and then created your own line of equipment at Aquascape. Well, yeah, so my very, what this yeah, is. my very first biofalls was made out of an 80 gallon Rubbermaid cattle trough. My very first skimmer was a garbage can with a laundry bag net from the laundry room. I mean, it's so crazy, man. <laughs> so this guy truly has built up an incredible uh, business from the ground floor. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. You're it's an fun. energetic guy. Yeah. Well, I got I got the patent for this product when I was 24 years old. And awesome. So anyhow, guys, it's going to be really cool. This is where we're at right now. They're placing stone. And we got Ed Ballou. You see this man right back here? Not only is he handsome, but he's extremely knowledgeable. Uh, no, not you. Oh! <laughs> no, there's Ed. Ed's an actual marine biologist, works for Aquascapes. And Ed is um, the scientist of the group and really figures out how to put together these ecosystems and how to make these ponds self-sustaining. And what's really fun about this, guys, and why I think it's such a, a, a passion project for myself is they're letting me get involved. I'm helping out with some rocks, not as much as they are, but I'm definitely getting involved today and learning from them because if you think this is my last water feature, you'd be 
woefully mistaken. Uh, this place is going to get insane, guys. I promise. I'm learning from them. Ed, Ed is picking the different rocks and placing them. Um, each one has a function. We got cypress that I cut down. And, yeah, so uh, when we're done, yeah. when, we're, when, when we're done, our goal is that you don't see one inch of plastic, liner, piping, or anything else. So all, so you do your vertical edges, we're doing our, our, our boulders, and the horizontal is the gravel. So we're, we're getting there, folks. We've torn up the front yard, but I think it's gonna be one hell of an entrance when you walk up to deliver the mail. So my mailman's gonna be stoked. So check this bridge out, man. Uh, you see this, this other, you can't see half of them because he's in camo right now. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> you can only see him from the waist up right now. But um, Kyle has been, as you know, Kyle and I are buddies. And uh, this pond is also sponsored by Kyle Asplund because he had a bunch of cap rock on. Uh, and a shout out to Timmy Asplund also. So it's the, the Asplunds have helped me out by uh, giving me these cap rock, um, which is really amazing stuff but it's this piece that i think it kind of makes the feature you know uh it's this beautiful flat piece of rock that kyle ripped off of his pool as you know kyle's redoing the uh swimming with pool and this is now my bridge and so you'll you'll step over this beautiful stone just to get over the pond there's a, a little cave the turtle will be able to swim beneath it and i'm only going to have one turtle in the pond there's just going to be for the fly river turtle so there won't be a heavy bio load i'll put a few fish in but it's going to be the fly river turtle and then as we evolve this thing you guys are going to be stoked because i've got tons of idea look at all that space there it needs plants and habitat and that habitat's going to be for my chinese box turtles i'm going to make a nice a fence and we're going to have land turtles and water turtles in one area and I'm gonna shut up and let these guys work. All right, let's get back to work. <laughs> this whole thing is about teamwork and some serious heavy lifting, both physically and with the use of equipment. Thank goodness for Crocodile Kyle. I gotta tell you, he really loves this stuff. It's kinda in his blood. He knows a thing or two about heavy machinery and will use any excuse he can to play with these big boy toys. But aside from the manual labor that goes into it, there is also a fair amount of technical stuff too. All right, so this is cool. We're talking about what Aquascape manufactures, um, they really sell kits that you can buy and they're affordable, guys. And you can do this. They want people to be able to build their own water features. Obviously, we have the A-Team here. But this is one of their, one of the reasons their kits are so successful. It's because they come with the biofalls and these skimmers here. Now, the skimmer is basically, as it sounds, similar to a pool skimmer. It's got two pumps at the bottom. The one pump is gonna activate their biofalls waterfall and it draws water in through this trap door, okay? The door opens up and large debris is caught in this basket. When I wanna clean it, I just pull up that basket. So we, we get the large stuff, we can dispose of it. Yep. You know, I can yep. make a mulch pile or feed some plants with it. But down in here, what do you call th this screen yeah, in here? Yeah, that, that's basically, that's, um, that, it, it's, a, it's a sediment trap. So okay. it's gonna capture sediment. So when that thing is full, that little filter pad will weigh like 10 pounds. Right, and then I hose it <laughs> off, gotta hose yep. it off, get yeah, rid of you it. Know what? I, that material, um, the way it's a really stiff, um, it's got an open weave to it. Instead of hosing it off, so if you hose it off, are you on well water or city well water? Well water. Well water is good. So the reason I asked that, and you don't want to use city chlorinated it'll water because it'll the kill off the bacteria. The, um, you could just take that thing up and give it a good whack on the ground and it'll knock that sediment out. Okay. And just minimal rinsing, put it back in place and you're going to be good to go. All right, awesome, man. And then we have two pumps. One pump is going to control the flow on the bottom of the pond to help agitate it and create current for the turtles uh, or turtle. And the other pump is going to control the bio falls, which has a bunch of surface area bio balls exactly. in there. The upper surface area for creating beneficial colonies of bacteria that are going to get rid of the nitro nitrogenous waste and so on. Um, the so other, the other cool. key that I want to mention here yep. is by using a skimmer. So I see a lot of designs where um, people will put a pump on the bottom of a pond. Okay. The bottom is going to have lower dissolved oxygen. So the top section of the water that's in contact with the atmosphere is going to have the highest dissolved oxygen. So we want to draw that material in because the biological filter is its own living, breathing organism. 
So the dirtier the water is, the more it needs to breathe. Okay. So to break down all of that waste, so you want to you want to supercharge it basically. You want to feed it a mixture of that dirty water mixed with the high dissolved oxygen, and that increases the overall efficiency for the filter, which is critical. Okay. Especially when you're working with animals like we love, which are large turtles, which yep. are just they poop a lot. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, so you need to make sure filtration and volume of water is something that you should probably yep. impress upon people that are getting involved in aquaculture. It's important to know what you know your math. Absolutely. You, you want to know the volume of water. You want to know your flow rate. We're going to be turning this body of water over probably oh gosh, six or eight times an hour. Six or eight <laughs> times an hour? Yeah. That's insane, man. Yeah, we're going to be turning this thing up, which is good. Um, so that 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 is that's good. There's nothing wrong with that, especially when you start talking about biomimicry. When we're talking about a river turtle that's used to high good water quality, we want to make sure that we're trying to recreate that environment. That's the reason why we chose this uh, the local capstone, yeah. um, because that's going to help buffer the pH. Um, these turtles are going to thrive in an environment of 7.6 to 8.3. Oh, I can't wait to see that animal in here, man. <laughs> now, when we get the water in here today, it will be a little foggy because we have some right. sediment, we have some uh, dust from the rock and so on. But in a few days, this will be a nice, clear uh, area, and there's going to be a beautiful, lazily swimming along uh, turtle in it. I can't wait. <laughs> I might even get in the pond also. Absolutely. You know? I don't mind. <laughs> I, you, know, I don't, you know I like it. This is exciting, guys. You're working on the other side of the pond right now, and the thing that, it, that I was excited that, that you're including in this design are these jets that are gonna gonna be agitating the ground or, right. or the, the bottom. Um, what kind of material? Like I've never actually I've seen this in uh, some saltwater aquariums. The articulating yeah, exactly. uh, tubing, yep. and that's obviously so we can adjust the flow the way we want it to go. Exactly, so you can adjust it, and then you can also they'll, they'll hold the position real well. Yeah, it's nice, and you can hide them in the we in the substrate. We could totally hide them, and we could uh, we could um, take these apart or add on to it, so oh, we cool. can manipulate the length and, and um, as necessary. And so the thinking here, guys, is that we're we're going to create water movement over the substrate of the pond. So when there's organic matter that falls to the bottom. A skimmer's not going to really get that, so you have to create some kind of current on the bottom of the pond in order to lift it up and bring it into the skimmers. Uh, so that's what they're doing here. But the other reason is since the guys at Optiscape do their homework, I had a great conversation with Ed uh, last week, and I was really, really excited that he went. Um, you know, I, this is silly, but these are professionals. Uh, but he went and researched fly river turtles, and he taught me a few things that I didn't actually know. Uh, they like the alkaline water, which is why we're using the Florida capstone and right. the current. And also, you mentioned something that I thought was cool about females liking to hide in root balls, and the males like the me the, the legging, uh, the rock exactly. legends. Exactly. So explain that. Yeah, uh, exactly. So the uh, the diversity of these uh, these animals, um, because they are somewhat territorial, they both go to different habitats within the same river system. Um, so it's actually it was it's flip flop. Okay. The, the females right. like the the limestone ledge, and the males like to wedge themselves under uh, these big root wads and things like that, um, where they'll rest throughout the day and then they can get out and they can feed on Valsenaria. There you go, yeah. man. See, how cool is that? So you're never, uh, I don't like to ever be a know-it-all and I love to learn and that's why we do Camp Kennan and I have no problem getting schooled by a marine biologist. Hey, They're gonna go from like, you know, where they're living right now, which is perfectly functional to the Taj Mahal exactly. ponds. Exactly, and that's what I strive for here, man. That's why I'm like geeked out that, you know, we met up with the Aquascapes crew because I, I don't know, I don't, I think this might be the beginning of a beautiful relationship. It's hard to believe just how much this project is progressing with each passing hour. With every rock that is moved, decisions are being made as much on function as they are in art. Every hole being dug, every mound being built, has the aesthetic in mind. And nowhere is this principle more important than when it comes to building the waterfall area for the pond. So this has always been a mystery to me when I fooled around trying to make waterfalls and I'm really excited for these guys to kind of do this and then this way I can pay attention. Waterfalls can sometimes be the trickiest part of the pond because you have moving water and you have to make sure that it moves in a way that you want it to um, and that's what's going on right now. So these two rocks are framing the waterfall. If you think of water in nature and water comes down a hillside yep. eroding away the earth. 
usually leaving back behind their rocks, you can't move. Okay. Right? Um, so the key with the waterfall is keep the stone to scale with the size of the fall. You would never see a bunch of little six inch rocks stacked on top of each other. Mother Nature was knocking all stuff down, right? So what we've got here is kind of our frame rocks. So if I saw, let's say for example, a four foot high waterfall in nature, the size boulders next to that four foot fall would be four and a half, five, six foot, right? Big giant rocks that the water couldn't move and then that water spills in between okay. those big ones. Gotcha. So I don't have a four foot fall here, but I've got a six inch to eight inch fall that I want to come in through here. So I've got a big frame rock on one side, big frame rock on the other, and then this determines what that water is going to do. Okay. So the fewer rocks you can use when building a waterfall, the more natural it'll look. Oh, I see. So the waterfall behind you, yeah, can it will kind of be done the same. You can see the height. Yeah. This right is my biological filter. Okay. So I've got to build a waterfall based off of the height of this. So over here by you, we'll look to use maybe one of these big giant boulders. Oh my God. Take yeah, up this whole space in here. Maybe we'll get lucky and even get some of that water to kind of dance through that rock a little gotcha, bit. Gotcha, yeah. And then I want to come over here with another decent sized rock. Okay. And then that guy, I think Ed was thinking, might come back over in here to kind of balance out the size of the rock that you're going to be take it up there and then put that one over here. All right, cool, you're I tying think. everything together. Awesome, man. So they're gonna place this rock on the other side of the big one. This is gonna this is gonna wind up being uh, the other side of the waterfall. So it's pretty pretty gnarly stuff we got going on. These are heavy rocks, and this is not a massive feature. Okay, these guys do features all over the world, and they're moving mountains, literally giant pieces of stone. But even with this, I could never tackle this by myself. There's just no way. So it's awesome we got Kyle. Yeah, and the rest of the guys from Offer Escapes will really make sure this waterfall functions properly. The waterfall is the last piece of equipment we are installing, but it's arguably the most important one as well. Let's take a closer look at it to get a better understanding of how Crazy, it works. Huh? All right. So, goes the other way. That flat part goes in the front. Flat part. So now, what I want to point out here, so on the bottom here, that's going to leave a swirl chamber. Okay. You also notice, you see how that uh, the discharge is coming in, not right in the middle. It's coming in at, at an angle. Okay. That's going to create a swirl chamber. So cool. the water's going to the water's going to come in. It's going to swirl around. That allows the sedimentation process to occur. So solid sand and stuff like that will settle out. That's why we put that back flush uh, thing cool. in there. So what you would do is you'd shut off the main pump. Okay. Open up that ball valve, and this would start draining by gravity, and it'll suck all that stuff out. Awesome. Bump the pump on, and it'll agitate flush it all, it. flush it all, and you're good to go. That's awesome. So man. that's going to be the heavy sediment. Now this is going to be your biomedia. So let's get that guy oh, in man. there. Let's get this rack that separates yep. the biomedia from and the. And this heavy is going to be so again. We're going for a diversity of different uh, um, types of medias because each different type is going to have different species of bacteria and enzymes awesome. and stuff like that growing on it. Cool. So these will get laden also with sediment. Um, um, you shouldn't have to clean these out other than once a year. Okay. So once a year, you're going to want to pull all of that media out and wash it off really well. Usually about this time of the year. You're going to probably do it here in Florida, January. Okay. Because you want to do it at the at the lowest at during the coldest or right as you start warming up. All so right. Wait till it gets to the lowest, and once you start seeing that warming trend, that's when you want to hit this gotcha. because that's going to jump start the height. Re-inoculate them. Exactly. Cool. So man. now on top of that, we didn't open. Actually, the guys oh, did. The bio balls, we right? Got bio balls, exactly. I love bio balls. So we're going to take these guys. So you just move them right in the bag. These are bio balls, and this this will allow <laughs> bacteria to colonize and attach because they. Inside each bag, there's a lot of these have lots of areas where the ball, the, the bacteria can adhere, yep. and water rolls through it, exactly. and they perform their function of eating uh, decaying detritus and whatever exactly. else, and turning it back into uh, healthy water. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. I'm ready for my marine biology degree. <laughs> so this is, I mean, this is a living, breathing organism. I mean, you're creating cool. a, a living ecosystem here, and we want to diversity those habitats. So the next thing we're going to do after that, we're going to put that rack up in here. So there's going to be a tray that sits in here. We'll okay. fill that with more rocks, and then that'll get planted with aquatic vegetation. No way. So the vegetation, there's holes in it, and the vegetation, the roots will go down in here. So as that water's flowing up, it's a mini bog filter. It's exactly what it is. That vegetation floats That's in there really and cool. it sucks up all that, that stuff. That is really, really it's cool. A really cool, nice, clean system from here. Goes over that uh, all that stuff that you just formed in place, rolls its way down, and it's going to make its way towards our skin. All right, man. All just right. To
start the process all over again. <laughs> so now we just um, have to finish doing some foaming work right. over here, put in a couple more rocks, more rock down gravel there. down in the bottom, the start other finishing side. that other side, and uh, we actually might need to get Kyle back on the uh, machine because we're going to load it. We should put these big that boulders big, in here. Yeah. The home stretch is finally upon us. We now need to move some super large rocks up against the side of the berm that was created for the waterfall's elevation. The floor to sand in my front yard would wash away pretty quickly without it. The cool thing is, these rocks can become shelters for some of my other critters. Look at this cave, natural cave that the Chinese box turtles are gonna live. Uh, it's so cool, man. So, oh, God, look at this thing. I mean, would you wanna live in that? Yeah. Now it's time for the final touches. Fill in the small stones on the edges. Relocate a few plants to give it a more natural feel. Oop, sorry about that, marginated tortoises. We'll plant you something else, I promise. Boom. Greg is pumped and so am I. This baby has really come together just as they promised it would. The pond has literally come to life right before our very eyes. This is amazing. So I can't believe these guys did it, but one day they transformed the entry into my uh, humble abode into a tropical paradise for a fly river turtle. We're gonna do that video soon. Uh, it, it comes with everything, guys. Biofalls, marine biologist, garden gnome. Uh, you know, we got the teak, we got the teak, that was a laugh ball. We got the teak, uh, you know, that was a cherry on top of this whole thing. Uh, I just wanted to really thank Chris and Brian, uh, Ed and all the guys at Ironscapes, and certainly want to thank Greg for really coming out here and, you know, putting his skills where his mouth was, you know. It was really awesome meeting him, and we've been having some adventures. So you believe me now? I believe you now, <laughs> and I hate to admit it, but listen, here's what's important, guys. These guys do some amazing projects. I want you to go where they gotta go to subscribe to your channel. I wanna get as many Camp Cannon Army folks over to his channel, because you're gonna learn a lot. If yeah. you wanted to have aquatic turtle set up, they make what you need to do it yourself. Yep. No more aquariums. Let's get turtles outside. This is the ultimate aquarium. A pond is the ultimate aquarium. I mean, how many people can have a 500, 600,000 gallon aquarium in their house? But anybody can do that with a pond. And we need more kids doing this. We right. need more people. Like this literally, this changes your house into a home now. There's nobody that's gonna come up to this entranceway and not notice and talk about this water feature. And, and the great thing, Greg, is this is gonna evolve. You know, I have so many ideas already. We're gonna add other animals to it, a yeah. containment barrier. You're gonna have terrestrial turtles running around you know how I do things it is gonna get tweaked I just really wanted to thank everyone for this doing is, their homework this is my team I mean Ed's been with me for 25 years Brian's been with me for 23 years Chris has been with me for five years this is what we love to do I mean this when you find a job that you you don't when you find a job that you love to do you never have to work another day in your life and that's how we feel this is a lot of work yeah but you at the end of the day you get to see what you just created look at this waterfall man Kate and I are going to be chilling out by the waterfall. It's Next. very romantic. Right, Kate? That's right, honey. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Next year, Fly River Turtle. So, yeah. yeah, we just want to get more people into this hobby. With the technology today and everybody that's so busy, they don't have time. This, you will lose hours and hours and hours just sitting here gazing yeah. at the sound and the, watching the songbirds come in, seeing the turtles. Like, everybody deserves a water. Well, feature. we have a passionate following. We call them the Cam Cannon Army. Amen. Uh, they're gonna love you, so go on over and check out his YouTube channel. Tell them where to go, and we'll have a link in the description yeah, as well. Yeah, Greg Witzak, the Ponga, and Kenan, this is what I always do whenever I'm out here. At the end of the day, this is what we look like. So this is how you go in on the beach area, and you just simply get in, and this is really called getting into your work, right? Nice. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, that feels good. Wait for me, buddy. <laughs> 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 All right. Woo! Well, everyone, we'll see you later. This water's cold. I always jump in cold, cold water. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Hey.